I've made a really, really special cami top that is not lingerie. And then I have a dress. These could be basics, but these are not basic. <laughs> Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and this is the second time you're seeing me today. Yep, this is just the way it turned out this time. In the previous video, only a little while ago, you would have seen a lot of techniques, a really practical video for options you can use for sewing these areas, necklines and straps on camisole patterns for knits. So they can be super basic, you can use them as pajamas, you can use them undergarments for like she blouses, that sort of situation. Or you can use other types of knits and just wear them out and about, like outer garments. You can make them as camis or dresses or nighties. They can be super versatile patterns that can be a lot for you, just depends on how you make them. And I always love giving you options so that you can see what's best for your situation, for your supplies, for your skill level, for the look that you want. So have a look at the previous video. I'm sure that after seeing that, you won't be scared of doing these bindings. You don't need a cover stitch. You can do it with your regular sewing machine and you're gonna have amazing results. I was coming up with some ideas to make some of these garments in a different way. And I thought, why don't I compile all of that and have it as a resource video? So you would have seen some sneak peeks of fabrics in that technique video of the garments I was making to show you today. I've used the patterns from the Luna loungewear collection from Love Notions. This is an older pattern that I have already featured on the channel. I've made some camis, some dresses, so you will find content about it already on the channel. This time the pattern has been updated. It now includes the full size range up to 5X, up to a 59 and a half inch hip, 57 and a half inch bust. And in the past, you only had a standard bust option there for the 90 and the cami. Now you have the full bust option included. That means if you have a D and E sewing cup size, you are going to get a better fit because the full bust adjustment has already been done for you. So this is a pattern that has five patterns in one pattern. You have a bralette that you can make and wear on its own, or you can put it inside your cami or your 90. It's up to you. You have capri or shorts. Now this pattern for the capri and the shorts can be made in a knit or a woven. I did a little bit of a comparison with the older version of the pants and in the older version they were only recommending you make it with wovens and the pattern had a, a bit more ease than the pattern has now. So take that into account at least for my size at extra large. I only had one and a half inches of positive ease at the hips which would be fine if I want to make a pants to wear outside and whatever, but maybe in a woven for sleeping, it might be a little too tight. But if you make it in a knit, then it would be perfectly fine. So consider that if you're planning to make the capris or the shorts, make a test garment if you plan to wear it with a woven. Maybe you want to give yourself a little extra on the side seams at the hip area or maybe size up at the hip area. That's just my impression because in the previous version, it was definitely a little more looser fit. And then it was only recommended you make it in wovens, you know, so maybe there's a little compromise there with the pant being a certain way so that you can make it in a knit or a woven. But I think for pajamas, most of you will want to make it in a knit. So let's leave it at that. If you're making it in a knit, I think the current part will be okay. <laughs> For the bralette, the cami and the nighty, of course, you need a knit fabric. For the binding, if your main fabric is really lightweight, you want something a little heavier, has at least 5% spandex. I would say 10% spandex would be better so that you have stretch and recovery. And the easier way would be to use fold over elastic. All these techniques are described in the pattern so you can see how to do that and in the previous video I've shown you in detail how to sew those in the way that I like to do it so you have a lot of resources for you to be able to do that with success because the Luna loungewear collection has been re-released today the price is five dollars because it's feature Friday but then it will continue discounted Saturday and Sunday not at five dollars but 24% off from the regular price so the regular price is 12.50 and it'll be 9.50 Saturday and Sunday so discounted a little bit less but today Friday definitely is the best day to get it for five dollars I think that's like 60% off ish if you want to purchase your pattern I'd be really grateful if you used my affiliate link that is in the description box and also in the pinned comments I do make a little commission when you buy from my link and that supports the work that I do here 
And remember to always use my code Karina10 at checkout and that gives you an extra 10% on top of the discounts that you see there already. I did make a pair of shorts from the Luna loungewear collection last year in a rayon twill and I've done all the fitting adjustments and I've done a yoga waistband on that. I have my pattern there and I think I would keep using that pattern if I wanted to make it in a woven. For the new version update I think I would be happy to use the same size for a knit. If I'd wanted to use the older version for a knit it would have been too baggy and I would have needed to size down. So yeah those are just my thoughts on the shorts and capris. <laughs> For the cami and the nighty, the only fitting adjustment I made was to add an inch around this area. So just under the side seam, maybe an inch down, I drew a line and added an inch there and that would just bring the waist down to where I need it to be. And in general, just make this top part fit a little better for me. I am a little taller, so I'm always adding a bit in certain areas. For the nighty, I use the original length and it hits me above the knee. For the cami, I use the original length and it's fine at the mid hip. Now, I mentioned there was a bralette option there if you want to put it in the nighty or the cami. I don't usually go with that option because with a larger bust, I just don't feel that you get the proper support with a bralette that you get from a proper bra. That's just my opinion. I have made a cami with a shelf bra that has a ton of support and zero bounce and all. Lots of layers in there, power mesh and foam bra cups. I think it's essential, at least for me, to have a bra cup in there. And while I can't get my hands on the right size of a foam bra cup, I'm just not making bralettes because I really need that to be there. So just know that there is a bralette there. I think it would be okay if you need really, really light support to sleep in. But to wear out on the street, at least for me, it's just not going to work. I'm just telling you what my experience is with bralettes and why you're not seeing me sew that option on there. But it's great that it is there because you might want to try it and you have it in the standard and the full bust option also. Now for today, I have a dress to show you and a cami to show you. They are different, I love them. These are not loungewear or items that I can sleep with at all. These are actual garments that I can wear out and I'm really happy with them. For my dress, I chose an athletic knit with a houndstooth print, black and white. It's a fabric I got recently in Sao Paulo when I went with my family. I got a lot of yardage of that print because I just love houndstooth. In every type of material, weather needs, you know, athletic needs, wovens, I, I have some in rayon. I have houndstooth in practically every single fabric type. And now I had it in this athletic knit. I thought it's gonna be a great basic dress. For this one, I did a little different. I did bands in the front here, in the front and the back. It's not part of the pattern, but it's so easy to do. And you can see how to do that in the previous video about cami finishings. This is the first dress I made. This is a medium weight athletic knit in houndstooth. One of the fabrics I got from Sao Paulo just at the beginning of July, so it was fresh in my mind. I love houndstooth, so why not? The difference here is that I put a band right there. I'd made a similar dress like this last year in a purple and pink athletic knit. This time the only thing I made different was I did a band here instead, so it's not a binding at the front and the back. They are both rounded. I made the front a little lower than the back on the pattern, just about an inch, just personal preference. On the inside I drew a yellow dot so that I know when I want to put it on which is the front and which is the back because it's really hard to tell. I think this is classic black and white, I'm going to be able to wear this so many times for so long and I feel that this type of print is never outdated or anything like that and this type of dress also, simple doesn't take up too much fabric and I feel the coverage under here is really good. It's exactly like I want it. This pattern is perfect like that. Length of the strap of course is customizable to you. From making this in the past I know exactly how long this area has to be. That is a sort of trial and error thing that you have to figure out because you know it's, everyone's body is different in this section. For the binding I did it with a narrow zigzag just on the edge trying to keep it as invisible as possible so that it wouldn't be seen there on the houndstooth. I didn't do the hem with a twin needle here for the same reason. I think you can barely see the stitch. It's also a narrow zigzag there. I just don't like black thread going through white fabric and that will happen with stripes and this type of print as well. Let me show you the inside. It's super, super neat, super easy. Just side seams. It did take me quite a while to match the patterns on the sides though. I did hand baste that before serging. I've tacked the seam allowance towards the back there with a little bit of hand sewing just to keep it in place and flat there. I wanted these to somewhat match. So 
this black feature I wanted it to go across the other one I didn't want to have it disleveled and go onto a white one or have it not making any sense so it took a little while to do but I'm so happy let's see it on simple styling just some gold accessories there gold leather not actual gold you know I use the nighty pattern to make a dress so I'm not going to use this to sleep this is an actual dress I use an athletic knit that is medium weight with a houndstooth print on it for the front I didn't use binding I used a band instead front and back and then for the partial armholes and straps, I do have binding from the same houndstooth material. I really like the cover under the armholes. I'm really happy with this one. It has a few extra details there with that band, but otherwise this could be a basic. And if you make it in a different type of fabric, for sure you could sleep in this. I made this one as an actual dress, not a nighty. A really versatile pattern and it was super easy to sew up. I really love it. It's a really nice basic dress that fits really well. I have some really old battered up ready to wear camis in there. I know I want to make some, but I wanted to make something a little extra special. I had a little bit of a look online for some inspiration. I knew I wanted to use some lace. All the ones I could find really just did not click for me. I didn't really feel inspired by all the camis with lace I saw online. Let me ask you, because sewing is a lot in our minds, do you ever have ideas or dreams about your sewing and then you wake up and it was a really good idea? Well, something like that's happened to me until I had a dream about it, I had a nap, I woke up and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And it's basically having a lace overlay but only the front with a little detail here on the front. So let's see, it's only a few minutes, you'll see how I put this together. Maybe it'll give you an idea to make yourself something different and special as well. For one of my camis, I'm going to put a lace overlay just over the front, not the back. What I've done here, at the bottom, I have my black knit. This is the fold. Then I have my pattern piece on top. You can actually see it right there, the white outline. And then I've got my lace on top, also on the fold. So I've gone ahead and cut them together with the rotary cutter, like all the lays at the same time, including the armhole there. But up here I have scallops on this lace and I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to cut the V shape on the lace. I'm going to leave it straight there. But I am going to cut the V shape on the cami. So I am going to finish this edge. So visually I'm going to have a V neckline at the bottom. But the lace is going to go over the top and it will give me a square neckline look with the lace while having a bit of skin there. I'm not going to be showing anything, this is just a fun little detail that I've decided to add. To make the v-neckline, it's really easy, all I did was fold my paper away about one and a half inches from here. So you can see the original rounded one, one and a half inches down and fold it until you meet that same shape there and that's my v-neckline. Super easy, I don't even have to tear my pattern apart for that. So now you can see how this is going to look. It's going to be a square neckline, a little higher with the lace. But at the back I'm going to have that v-neckline and the armhole is going to be the same right there. So I'm going to be catching the binding up to this edge here, catching that lace but then it's just going to be laced across. This is my v-neckline and I've done a little dot here where I'm going to snip and the technique for the binding is going to be exactly the same and it's just got a little step at the end that will give it the v-shape but for now we just snip into the dot right there. This is 3 8 seam allowance, so that's what I've drawn there. This is the right side of my garment, and now this snip is going to allow this to end up being straight like this. And this is how we sew the binding. I've put a pin at the center front of the binding. This center is going to match that dot right there, exactly there. And then the rest is just going to match here. You can see it's a little shorter. So the technique is the same, it's just one straight stitch 
with the different saranta here you have this area open like that i'm gonna sew this with the binding on the top and the neckline on the bottom but for this little v part i really want to see that snip and i really want to sew in the right place so i'm gonna sew this little section maybe three eighths from the snip this way and that way this way okay you can see i sewed right past that little snip so i don't have to worry about that and now i can flip this and sew it like you're supposed to stretching the binding on the top to meet the neckline and i'll sew up to where i stitch there and then pick up here and finish on the other side same thing Now what you do is just keep the seam allowance up and take this binding and just wrap it snugly around the seam allowance like that. The surged edge there is going to cover the seam at the back by a tad. I'm going to hand baste it down and then we're going to stitch in the ditch right there. Okay, there is the hand basting done. I'm also going to use a narrow zigzag. It'll look almost like a straight stitch. I'm doing it with a regular presser foot but I'm sewing right where the seams meet. And it's easy to see because these fabrics, although they are both black, they are contrasting. This is where I snipped. So when I look at it from this side, I drew a faint little mark there right in the center before sewing this, but the snip is right there. So now I'm gonna fold these right sides together here. And now with a straight stitch, I'm gonna sew this diagonally here, 45 degree angle, and that will form the V. There is a little diagonal seam and now when we open it like this, it'll have the V. I have already done the binding here on the front with the V and I've just placed my lace on top. This is stretch lace, this is going to stretch with me. This is going to look more like a higher square neckline with the lace but it's still going to have the V on the back. I've just pinned these partial armholes together, the lace on top of my main fabric here. And I'm going to align the side seams also. And then all I'm going to do is just pretend this is one piece of fabric. I'm going to put my back piece on top, right sides together. So right side of my back is going to be on top of the lace, which is the right side of the garment. And I'm just going to align these side seams and sew these three layers together at the same time. Once I've done the side seams, I'm doing a slightly different technique here to finish these armholes. So for this technique, you can do the side seams first. Okay, so here I have my kami with the side seams pinned. Remember there are three layers here. I've got the front on the top, then I've got the lace, and then I've got the back. Use the serger to sew these three layers together. This is how the front is going to look. It's gonna have the lace on top and the back is just the plain knit. So I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Now what I'll do with the hem is just align the raw edge of this lace to the raw edge of the knit, hem them together like that. Here is the front partial armhole and that's the back partial armhole. We have already sewn the side seams there. And on the front, I have this lace overlay. Just ignore it if you're not doing that. You know, you could just have a single layer. It doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> And I have pinned my binding here, letting a little bit protrude about an inch there and about an inch there. I just cut a longer piece of binding. I pinned it here in the center and just pulled it a little tighter here so that this binding ends up being about 10% shorter than the actual partial armhole. And I've just pinned them together, right sides together. And we sew this just the same way that we did this binding here. It's just got this shape here and you have that seam there. So that is how it looks after I've sewn it and hand basted it. Flip the binding to the inside. I'm catching it right there. And then I'm going to have these little bits left over here. And this is where I'm going to pull out my rings. These are bra rings, 18 millimeter or three quarters of an inch. And with this little bit there, I'm just going to put the ring inside and then just fold this back and then sew it right there close to the edge. I'll do that here on the back and here on the front is the same thing. Take a ring. I'm gonna have a ring basically on the front and on the back and then I'm gonna measure the length I need for my bra strapping. This is three quarters of an inch. It's really nice structured elastic for bras and that's what I'm gonna use to just put it right here on the front, sew it at the back there and then the other side 
on the back and that's how these straps are going to be finished which is another option you can also cover the bra strapping with fabric like i've shown you and then the process would be exactly the same if you've already made it before you probably know how long this needs to be otherwise i would suggest sewing it permanently on the back and leaving it long here and then adjusting it with the camion on the front and then just pulling this as much as you need. I'm not going to use sliders or anything like that. I don't have any of those. Uh, so this won't be adjustable. I'll just adjust it permanently the length that I know that it needs to be. And that's it. Super easy. And this is another way you can finish this part of a kami if you want to use bra strapping. My ready to wear kamis are in horrible condition. I keep using them because I haven't bought any new ones, but they are getting pretty old. And I wanted to make a nice one that I could wear on its own or under things. This is not lingerie as, at all. It's not that type of garment, but I did do the lace overlay over the front. You saw how I do that. I really enjoyed it. And I think it turned out really pretty. Now you can't see the detail here too much without my skin being underneath. But you can see that the layer underneath has that v-neckline so pretty and then i use the scallops from the stretch lace and just put it across there so that it looks sort of like a square neckline but also with a v underneath i don't know this thing just came to me sort of while i was waking up <laughs> after a little nap i knew exactly what i wanted to do because i knew i wanted to use lace somehow most of the camis that you see in ready to wear just have a bit of lace around here i sort of think those look like lingerie i wouldn't be happy to wear something with just the lace there so i decided to make the lace all along the front it's just a really simple overlay i treated the front as one piece and i even folded it back to hem it the same the two layers the binding leather look jersey i love using it it's really structured easy to work with it doesn't slide everywhere and it's structured has great recovery and I've used these little rings to sew onto there, onto there, and then I have bra strapping here on the top. Very nice, I love it. Simple black at the back, nothing special with the back. All the special bits are on the front. And yeah, I'm just so happy to have a piece like this that is definitely not a basic. This can be a basic if you sew in a, in a cotton or whatever you wanna use it to sleep with. It can be a basic, but if you do a few extra things, can be a not basic <laughs> and I love it. Let's see this one on, just with a skirt. I made the cami pattern from the Luna loungewear collection and mine is a little different because I've got a lace overlay just in the front. A little bit of details here that you'll see up closer. It's black, it'll be worn with everything and here I've got it paired with one of my Cebu Illusion skirt collection. You can see the lace on top of my knit. I've hemmed it normally, I've just treated these two layers as one on the front. It was super easy to put together. And this will be a great piece to wear on its own or under little jackets. I really love that square looking neckline but that has the V at the back. I think it's really really cool. It was not hard to sew. I really enjoyed putting all that binding together and it's a pretty unique cami that I know I'm going to enjoy wearing. Here's a closer look. You can see I've used the scallops from the lace and I have the V underneath. I've used my leather look jersey for the binding. I have some bra rings and bra strapping there. Super love it. I'm so so glad I thought this little hack up. It's a little bit different using the same pattern and then this can turn out being not so basic and and a little extra. Love it. So I know I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this one because I use my black camis a lot underneath little jackets and stuff and I was sort of covering them up because they're not looking very nice. <laughs> the color's going, you know? So now I have an awesome replacement that is so, so nice. I love how that square neckline looks, but I love that you can also see the V underneath. I love that, I love that so much. I'm so glad I thought of it because I love sewing things that are different like that. If you're still not sure and doubting whether you can pull off a project like this, of course you can. Remember the previous video shows you a lot of the nitty gritty techniques of how you can finish this area. It's the only area that I think you could be worried about because other than that, you just have side seams and a hem. They are pretty easy once you get the hang of these little techniques. And you can use so many things, bindings, photo elastics, 
bra supplies, you know, you can have a lot of fun. So I hope I've motivated you. I think this is a really versatile pattern that you can make so many times. There are so many garments within the one pattern. And over time you can make a ton of these for different things. You know, if you want to make yourself something to sleep in, to lounge in, to go out with, you can make something really fancy in a stretch velvet maybe. You can use lace overlays. I mean, you can do so many things with just this one pattern. I mean, I think the size range is really good. The fit is really good. I recommend you add this one to your collection because you're gonna get a lot of use from one pattern like this. Remember, it's only $5 today, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It'll be $9.50, discounted from the regular price of $12.50. So there is a little discount on the weekend, but today's a better day to get it for sure. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you back here on Lifting Pins and Needles very soon with more sewing. Bye!